In this video, we solve problem 8.2.19-T from Essentials of Statistics, 6th edition by Mario Triola. The problem statement says, trials in an experiment with a polygraph include 99 results that include 24 cases of wrong results and 75 cases of correct results. We're asked to use a 0.01 significance level to test the claim that such polygraph results are correct less than 80% of the time. We want to identify the null hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis, test statistic, p-value, conclusion about the null hypothesis, and the final conclusion that addresses the original claim. We're asked to use the p-value method and use the normal distribution as an approximation of the binomial distribution. And then we're told that p should represent the population proportion of correct polygraph results. First, we want to identify the null and alternative hypotheses. In order to do that, I'll share my paper with you. I don't know if you guys can hear the dishes being done by my significant other's children in the background. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're here. The first thing we want to do is identify the original claim. And I've already underlined it for us. It says we're testing the claim that such polygraph results are correct less than 80% of the time. So that's saying that the proportion of results that are correct is less than 80%. So that's our claim. We always wanna write that down first. So P is less than 80%, but we want that in decimal form. And then we want to write down what must be true if this isn't true. Well, if, this, if P is not less than 0 0.80, P must be greater than or equal to 0 0.80. Then I look at both of these and identify the one that does not contain the condition of equality. So the one that does not contain the condition of equality happens to be the original claim. So that's our alternative hypothesis. And then the null hypothesis looks exactly like the alternative hypothesis, but you replace that less than sign with an equals sign. So this is what I'm looking for when I'm on my lab statistics and I'm trying to identify the null and alternative hypotheses. Okay, so we're right here. And the null is that P is equal to 0.80. Okay, so it's either A, B, or C. And the alternative is that P, the population proportion, is less than 0 0.80. So that must be A. Great. And now we want to identify the test statistic. Now, in order to do that, we need to find the corresponding um, sample statistic because the test statistic just um, relates back to that uh, sample statistic. So what we need is p hat. So we want to go through this problem statement and identify p hat or potentially compute p hat so that we can use p hat to compute um, the test statistic z. Okay, so it says trials in an experiment with a polygraph include 99 results. That means n equals 99 that include 24 cases of wrong results and 75 cases of correct results. Now remember, P represents the proportion of correct results. So X, that's the number of successes, is the number of correct results. So we have 75 correct results. Now with those two pieces of information, we can compute P hat. So P hat, that's our sample proportion, is the number of correct results divided by the number of results. Or we could write that as x over n. In this case, that's 75 divided by 99, which is approximately 0.75. It's just 0 0.75, uh, 0 0.75, 75, 75, 75. It's 0.75 repeating. Okay, so we've got that. Now we were asked to find the test statistic. 
So remember, every time you're doing a hypothesis test, it's really about this sampling distribution of your sample statistic, in this case, p hat. And this is assuming that the null hypothesis is true. So I always want to sketch that sampling distribution of p hat, assuming that the null is true. In our case, the null hypothesis is that the true population proportion is 0 0.80. And we remember from lesson 6.3 that the mean of the sample proportions is the true population proportion. And this time we're assuming that that population proportion is 0 0.80 because that's our null hypothesis. Now remember how sampling distributions work. We've got a sample size of 99. So basically we want to um, think about the idea of creating samples with n um, equals 99 elements each time and then computing a sample proportion and then selecting 99 other values and then computing a sample proportion. And we keep doing this, we keep computing p hats. We compute p hats for lots and lots and lots of different samples that all have size n equals 99. And then we look at the distribution of those p hats. We said back in chapter six that under certain conditions, the sampling distribution of p hat is approximately normally distributed. And the mean of p hat is equal to the true population proportion because p hat is an unbiased estimator. So we've got this and the question becomes, okay, if our p hat is 0 0.75757575, which is down here, The question is, is that significantly low given that our mean of the sample proportions is actually equal to the value of the population proportion assumed in our null hypothesis? If it is significantly low, we're gonna say that's rare, but it's actually happening. So maybe our assumption is incorrect. So we'll throw out the null hypothesis. If it's not significantly low, if it's sort of typical, given that this null hypothesis is true, then in that case, we can't accept that the null hypothesis is true, but we can fail to reject it. We can say we don't have enough evidence to reject the idea that the population proportion is not equal to 80% or 0 0.80 in decimal form. Okay, so we're trying to determine whether this is significantly high or significantly low. In order to do that, we're going to compute um, an area on this side, and we're also going to compute a test statistic that is um, that corresponds to this value of p hat. And whenever we're dealing with um, sample proportions, and we are um, using the normal distribution as an approximation to the binomial distribution. We're saying that this is approximately a non-standard normal distribution. So we wanna convert from a non-standard normal distribution to a standard normal distribution. It's gonna have the same shape, but instead of having a mean of P equals 0 0.80, we're gonna have a mean of zero. And the question becomes, well, what is the test statistic? I'll call it Z sub test such that the area to the left of z sub test on my standard normal distribution is equal to the area to the left of p hat on that non-standard normal distribution representing the sampling distribution of p hat. Well, in order to figure that out, we just use this formula. But in order to get a z score, we take that variable and we subtract the mean of the population it comes from, and then we divide by the standard deviation of the population it comes from. But this time, instead of our random variable being represented by x, it's represented by p hat. p hat is our random variable here. So we're going to subtract the mean of the p hats and divide by the standard deviation of that sampling distribution of p hat. So we have p hat minus the mean of the p hats, which is equal to p, and then we're dividing by this standard deviation of the p hats, which is p times q divided by n. So now I just substitute my values in and simplify. Now p hat was that 
uh, 0 0.75 repeating. I'll just write it as 75 over 99. So I'm not um, uh, creating any rounding error. And then I wanna subtract the value of P that we're assuming to be the null height or uh, the, the value of P that we're assuming in the null hypothesis um, because that is the value that we're assuming that the mean of the P hats is equal to. Remember the mean of the P hats, the mean of the sampling distribution of P hat is equal to the true population proportion because P hat is an unbiased estimator. So we're going to subtract P under this assumption um, that P is equal to uh, 0 0.8 that came from the null hypothesis. And then we divide by the square root of P, it's 80% in decimal form times Q, that's the complement of that in decimal form, divided by the sample size, which in this case was 99. And that's going to give us our test statistic. So I have 75 divided by 99 minus 0 0.8, close parentheses. Oops, it's a little bit hard to see because of that reflection there, sorry. And then we're dividing by the square root of P times Q divided by 99, sample size. And so we get a test statistic of Z equals approximately negative 1.56. And we almost always round z scores to two decimal places. So we're right there. So the test statistic z, which is the number of standard deviations that p hat is below the mean, provided that the mean is equal to um, 0 0.8, is negative 0. Point, or negative 1.06 approximately. So let's go back to our homework. So we have negative 1.06 here. Okay, great. And then we want the p-value. Now in order to determine the p-value, this was the answer that they needed for part b there. In order to determine the p-value, we need to think about whether this test is a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test. So we look up here at the alternative hypothesis. Since it includes, excuse me, a less than sign, we can think of that as an arrow pointing to the left. This is a left tailed test. So P is the area in that left tail beyond the test statistic. So P is this area here, capital P. That's our P value. And that area is the same as that area over there. So we're trying to determine if this, this p hat is significantly low. And the way we determine if that's significantly low is we find the probability of getting that, a p hat that is equal to this value or less than that value, which is the same as getting a value for the test statistic that is equal to negative 1.06 or less than that. Okay, so now we just need that p value And I'm just writing this down so that we remember what this means. So I want the area to the left of z equals negative 1.06. Now you can find the area to the left either using table A2 or using Excel. I think I'll do both today. Okay, so we're going to go to z equals negative 1.06. So that's a negative z score. Negative 1.0 is here. And so we're on this row, this white row here. And this is negative 1.00, 1.01, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Again, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the area to the left of that test statistic is in the body of the table. So we have a 0 0.1446. That's one way of doing it. So I'll write that down. 
We can also use Excel to find this value. So I will go to Excel. And so we'll type equals here. We're gonna use one of the built-in Excel functions, norm.dist for normal distribution. And then you enter the X value, but in this case, we're talking about a standard normal distribution. So we usually use a Z value of negative 1.06. Then we have the mean of the distribution, which is zero, the standard deviation, which is one. And then we say true for cumulative. That just means we want the area to the left. And we get that value and we want around to four decimal places because that's what we have in our table. And we get uh, 0 0.1446, which is the same value that we got using table A2. That's good. Table A2 and Excel agree. So let's go back to the homework. The p-value is 0 0.1446. Round to four decimal places is needed, it says. So that's good, we did. Great. And now we want to identify the conclusion about the null hypothesis and the final conclusion that addresses the original claim. So we're taking our p-value and we're comparing it to our alpha value. Now our alpha value is our significance level. So this is alpha. Um, alpha is equal to 0 0.01. And P is equal to this value. So P is clearly greater than alpha this time. So that means, and remember this P represents a probability of getting a Z-score that is as extreme as the value that we got or more extreme, which is the same as the probability of getting a P-hat value that is as extreme as what we got or more extreme. And when we say extreme, we mean to the left, um, in this case, when we're doing a left-tailed test. So the probability of getting a P-hat value that is this value or less is approximately equal to 0 0.11. Four, six. You have a, a basically a 14.5% chance of getting a p hat value that is this value or less. Well, we want to compare that to a 1% chance. That's what our alpha is. Um, so this is, this. you might say that 14% is rare, but it's not nearly as rare as that significance level that we're going for. It's not as rare as that 1%. So p is greater than alpha, which means um, this isn't rare given that our population proportion is 0 0.8. So we cannot, we do not have evidence, we do not have evidence that suggests we ought to reject this null hypothesis. So we're going to fail to reject the null. Okay, now in order to decide what to say about our claim, we need to go back to the original problem statement and think about what failing to reject the null hypothesis means for our claim. Our claim was that P was less than 0 0.80. Since we're failing to reject the null hypothesis, we're saying that P might be equal to 0 0.80. We don't have enough information to reject the idea that P is equal to 0 0.80. So let's look at the options that they give us in our homework. Okay. We are going to fail to reject the null uh, because P is greater than alpha. And then we're going to say, you know, is there evidence to support the claim? Or is there not evidence to support the claim? Well, there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that P is uh, less than 0 0.80. Um, our evidence suggests that the population um, proportion may actually be equal to 0 0.80, um, but we can't be sure. 